Hello everyone and welcome back to my .NET full stack series. I know it's been quite a few some time that I have uploaded any video for this series but I am back again today where we are going to cover something very essential for any application and that is validation. If you have been following along so you will know that we have already covered the login and registration functionalities. So now we are going to take those forms to the next level by ensuring the data of our user submit is valid before it even reaches to our server and that's where the fluent validation comes into the picture. Fluent Validation is a .NET library that makes it incredibly easy to create complex validation logic in a clean and readable way. So whether you are validating user input for registration, login or any other form, Fluent Validation has got you covered. So in this video, we are going through how to set up a Fluent Validation in your .NET project and create custom validation rules and integrate them seamlessly with your existing code. So by end of this tutorial, you will have a solid understanding of how to make sure your application only processes valid data, helping you to avoid bugs and keep your app secure. Also, if you want a blog version of this video, so you can find that on letsprogram.in where I have already written a blog about about it like how you can add a validation in dotnet project using fluent validation so this covers most of the information what you are looking for so i will highly recommend if you want to see the blog so you can check out let's program in and now if you're ready to make your application rock solid with fluent validation so grab a coffee sit back and let's get started so this is what we have till now so we have this api we have controller and we have created the register and login so before going forward uh, what i got a lot of requests from you guys that that can i please use a uh, visual studio to to do this development this dot in series so the answer to the, that is yes i could do that but visual studio is is you will not get a good experience in mac if you're using visual studio so what i can do right i can start doing things in rider because rider is quite well compatible to do the dot net development so going forward i will not be using visual studio code but rather i'll use rider okay so i have the project already ready here so as you can see we have this angular blog yt it's in rider and it has something similar what you can see in visual studio right and inside this API in the controller, this is my auth controller and this is how it looks like in Rider, right? So now before even starting with the video, so what do we have to do first to do the validation? Step number one, you have to install the Nugget packages. So go inside this Nugget package. You can find that in Visual Studio as well and just search for Fluent Validation. Okay, so here you can see, I can see these two packages. The version is 11.9.2. So what you can do, let's go with this one. Click on install, right? But now the question is actually where we should install this validation so the validation will be done inside the application layer so it's highly recommended to install it in application folder okay in the application assembly so let's click here click on this and install okay and we also need this dependency injection extension click on this and install once these are installed right what you can do you can uh, just right click on your application and you can just open up the cs proj file just to validate that it is installed successfully or not so you can find this these two lines has been added, right? The fluent validation. So now once this is done, we have to start uh, writing the validators. Okay. So to write the validators, if you remember, we have a validators folder here. So now we will be adding our validators inside this. So to do the validation for login and register, we will have to create two validators. So let's right click over here and try to include a file. So we'll create a C file and we'll give the name as a login request validator. Okay. okay, let me add this to the kit as well. Yeah, so now this is what it is created to use the validator, right? We will have to inherit something called as abstract validator. And this is coming from fluent validation. Okay. And we just have to give which request you want to validate. So I, we have to uh, validate the login request. Okay. And how does this login request look like? This has a uh, email and password, right? And this is what we want to validate. So let's go back and over here, right? You can just create the constructor CTOR. And inside this constructor, you will have uh, access to something called as rule for. Okay. And in this rule for, you can apply some rule for your validator. So for example, I want to do for X dot email. Okay. I want to validate my email that this should not be empty. So we say not empty. Okay. This should not be empty. And then we can also give a message that email is required. So we can say with a message and we can provide that email is required. Okay. And you can also do some email validations as well, which is provided by this fluent validation that email and you can provide that with message and you can say email is not valid. If, if email is not there, right, then you can also add this kind of validations that it should be an email. Okay. And same thing we can do for the password as well. You can just make use of rule for, 
ओके एंड इन साइड दैट अगेन यू कैन जस्ट ग्रैब योर पासवर्ड बाई एक्स डॉट पासवर्ड राइट एंड देन यू जस्ट हैव टू स्पेसिफाई इट शुड नॉट बी एम टी ओके सो इट शुड नॉट बी एम टी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एंड यू कैन पुट अ मैसेज लाइक विद मैसेज दैट पासवर्ड इज रिक्वायर्ड राइट ऑल्सो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू प्रोवाइड सम मिनिमम लेंथ सो यू कैन से विद थिंग सो देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज मिनिमम लेंथ येस तो मिनिमम लेंथ ऑफ योर पासवर्ड शुड बी सिक्स If it is not six, then you can provide a message that password length should be at least six characters. Okay, and that's how you can uh, create your first login validator. So same thing I have to do for uh, request. So let me also do that for the register request. So let me again create a class register request validator. Okay, so what I can do again inherit the same thing by using abstract validator and this will be your register request, right? Again, C T O R inside the constructor you can add the rules. So if you remember, right, a login request has email, password, and username. So we can actually grab this information, right, which is again required for us doing registration. So let me put it over here. The only thing you have to also add rule for username. So you'll again say rule for, and inside that again just make sure that X dot username and you have to say that this should not be empty so you'd say not empty dot with message username is required and now i can say your validators are ready for request and sorry for register and login now you have to use them uh, when you are trying to do this login and register and where are we doing it we are doing that in authentication service so let's go in the authentication service and as you can see we are using primary constructor here so what you can do right you have to inject these two things so let me add it as a login or uh, request validator you can say login validator right and also we can do it for register so we will say register validator i think this should give me yes and then you can just give the name register validator oh again this got mistake this should not be login this should be register now so register validator right and then let's give the same name register validator okay and we can just format them so that it's a below not going outside your windows okay let's also make this below that's set okay this looks better now and now what you can do right so now we are already checking that if login is null then do this 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 and all that right now what we can actually do right we can we can make use of validator to the do this kind of job for example now what we will say we'll say var uh, your login request right or we we'll say yeah validation result i think i'm getting the intelligence so this is what we need to do and this is what we will check so we will first going to call that validator dot validate so the good thing is right we also get a, a sync so we can make this as a wait and we can make this guy as validate async okay and this will give us a result and the result has this error rule set executed and all that so we can check if it is not valid okay i have this not on the front so if it is not valid then we will return a failure by saying that auth error which is invalid login request okay if everything is okay then this will continue to do its job same thing i have to do it for register so let's go below here and no need to do this anymore we can just say where validation result and if it is not valid then we will return again result dot failure with the invalid register request okay and that's how you can actually plug in the validations in a dot net project and that's how easy it was just create a class okay inherit this abstract validator and just use them inside your services wherever you want the validation to happen right now let's go ahead and test it so let me run our application uh, let me make this as https and let's run this so as you can see when i was trying to run the application i'm not able to run it because one thing i did a small mistake here so as you can see some services are not able to construct so as we are using the fluent validation right so we have to register them as well okay so to register them what we will do we have already created a service collection extensions so we will go over here and over here we have to tell the dot net that hey that we are using uh validators okay so what you will do right you will just say services services dot then it will just add for okay let's click and just see the intelligence so there is something called as add validator async from assembly yeah so what we'll do that we'll make use of this using fluent validation and what we can do we can just say that uh, type of inside that we have the service collection extensions and then inside this assembly you have to add this particular validation and that's it the moment you add this right and now if you try to run the application it should work okay uh, just make sure that this add application is already added inside your api project so in the api project in the program so there it should be already added okay add application can you see and that's how you are able to register it inside your project okay 
now let's go ahead and run the application and let's see if you still get any issue see now our application is running fine and it is running on this particular port so let me bring the ui here the swagger ui and now let's try to do some validation okay so if i click on try it out if i remove this okay if i click on execute so can you see i'm getting this invalid login request because my validation is getting failed okay and what if, if i pass some uh, email id like abc at the rate gmail.com right and then maybe i don't pass any password let's see what happens if i execute this now so can you see again it fails that hey invalid login request again so i'm not happy with whatever the error message what i am getting from the server so what i want to do i want to improve my error messages that if the password is empty then it should actually give me that hey password is required or if the email is invalid then it should give me that hey email is not valid something like that so to improve that right let's go back to the writer again and what we will do right let's go back to this messages where we were getting it so what we are doing right so whenever the authentication the validation fails right we are just trying to send this auth error which is invalid login request okay and the message over here which is used is that invalid login request that's it so this is the problem so what we can do right we can now actually create a customized error okay if you remember right if this validation result has something called as errors okay and in this errors we will get your our all the error messages what we have provided during creation of the validator okay so if you go back here right so we have provided some messages right so i want to actually see these messages from the server okay so how can i uh, like modify my code to get such a request so what i will do right let's go back to your auth error and so we will create a static method which is public static okay this will return error and let's give a name create invalid login request error and what we have to pass we have to pass i enumerable of string okay and this string will be nothing but your errors which you will get from fluent validation okay and we have to return what we have to return new error type okay new error type concept which is validation error and over here right we have to pass the message okay so we have to convert the array basically the enumerable into a string so we can make use of string dot join and i will make a comma separated okay so this will be my comma separated errors and this will create an array as a string okay let's save the changes now we will be using this inside your authentication service so now what will happen right so once we are in so once it is invalid so what we will say we will get all the errors and this error will be coming from validation request dot error dot select and we can select all the errors okay this is a lambda expression so a dot error messages okay so that's what we are going to return and what this returns this returns a i enumerable of string which is what we want so let me change the name this is as errors the spelling is incorrect right and this errors we are going to pass it here so now we will have a new method called as dot create invalid login request error and we can pass the error over here okay and what this guy returns this guy returns nothing but of type error which is what we require okay to this failure because failure wants what of type error okay and now once you are done till here let's save the changes and restart your application okay let's go back here okay we can use the same and now when i click on execute can you see now i'm getting a proper error message what it is required that hey your password is required and it must be six character long so if i put here one two three now this is again there will be some failure so let me click on execute and now if i execute can you see i'm able to get a proper message which is that password must be six characters long right and same thing can be done for this email so if i just say four five six now the password is valid but if i change it to some wrong um, email id right so if i click on execute now see what happens that your email is invalid right so that's what the expectation from the validation was that it should give me an actual error messages and that's how we have created it okay so now there is a one small homework for you guys that now you have to do something similar for register okay so over here in the register also right we are getting some generic message which is invalid request uh, register request so you have to convert it to something like this what i have created okay and again if you need the code sample so what i have did i have already provided it on the github so you can just go on my github.com i'll provide the link in the description so this branch is available to everyone this is public now so what you can do you can just give it a star so i can know okay how many people are actually doing the homework okay so you can start with a good start to this you can clone this repository and you can 
do something similar for register okay and let me know if you guys face any issue while doing it so i will be there to help you guys just mention them in the comment section and i will there to help you guys and now there's what you have it now so you have the tools to implement the robust validation in dotnet right so this will not only improve your apps reliability but also enhance the overall user experience by catching such kind of error early so if you found this video helpful so don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials in this series because in the next video we will be covering about jwt tokens and trust me guys that's a very important topic and i really love that topic to teach and i think i have already few videos on my youtube but this time it will be a bit different i will be talking in and out about the jwt how it has been created what are the advantages what are those signature what are those payloads and all that trust me guys you should not miss that part all right so thanks for watching again and as always keep coding keep learning see you guys in the next one